September 29th, one month after Katrina. I've just gotten back from an expedition to New Orleans. The city is still officially closed, so Michael and I had to sneak in to check on our homes. Michael took a great picture of me standing next to all the soggy, nasty junk we pulled out of the flooded lower floor of our house. Against all odds, we were able to salvage this, and this, and this, and this. Now I'm back in Bloomington, Indiana, where we're evacuated, where we're renting a house, and Christy's already got a job here. But when will we be able to return to New Orleans? Welcome to J&B on the Rocks. I'm Jay. This is a program that uh, began in a basement in Bloomington, Indiana, back in 1992. It's an independent television series. That's me on the left. I'm Jay. I'm your bartender. That's B on the right. He mixes the video. He mixes the drinks. He mixes the video. You know, a lot has changed since uh, those heady, reckless, drunken days of 1992. I moved out here to Missoula, Montana, um, where I live in that, have lived in that house all these years. And uh, B, well, he moved to New Orleans. And uh, I guess you kind of know what happened down there. Or do you? You know, a lot of uh, coverage has been focused on what the experience in New Orleans, the, the boondoggle, the debacle. But what have you really seen of that place since Katrina hit. Well, guaranteed you won't you haven't seen anything like what you're gonna see today. This is a program in which we take a look at what happened in the 12 months since Katrina hit. In fact, uh, what you're gonna see is essentially a series of, of video that uh, editor B shot over the course of those 12 months once a month. So kind of in 12 segments as it were. And uh, if you stick around to the end, well, I'll show up again with a special um, mixed drink that you can mix along with me. In the meantime, here's Editor B. November 29, three months post-Katrina. We're back in New Orleans. We got no electricity, half our house is in ruins, and we're staying on a friend's futon, but we're home again. We stopped by Christie's old school, which is being used by as a SWAT headquarters. There's still instructions on Christie's chalkboard from the Friday before Katrina. It's been three months since we slept in our own bed, until tonight. Tonight, we're camping in our own home. It's a mild night in New Orleans, which is good because we have no heat. So it's Scrabble by candlelight, Scotch neat, battery-operated television, and an early bedtime for us. It's kind of spooky here. No lights in any direction for blocks and blocks, no neighbors that I know of, but we are not afraid. After all, somebody has to be first. As you walk through our neighborhood, you hear random electronic squawks coming from deserted houses. These are smoke detectors, dutifully alerting the absent residents that their nine volt batteries are running low. So here it is. So here it is. So here it is. So here it is. So here it is, today is five months after Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. We're here in New Orleans, and as you can see, things aren't exactly back to normal yet, and they won't be for a long time. As you can see, this streetlight is still down. It was knocked down by the hurricane, and it's still down now. Hey man, it's on, it's electricity. It's five months to the day, and Electricity is still not like a universality. Neither is getting the mail. Neither is finding a doctor that's open. Neither is uh, actually the line at Taco Bell's 20 minutes long. Actually, you can place your order. That'll take you 20 minutes to get it. That's a Taco Bell. So, you know where they have those sour cream guns? I heard some guy on the radio today saying that it might be um, 
you know, a few years before we start to see any real progress, and maybe 10 years before we wake up in the morning and don't think, how are we going to rebuild this city? In fact, I was thinking it might be the rest of my life. So, you know, I'm not complaining. 10 years would be pretty good. This is one of those big oaks that's come down. It looks like someone has sawed it a little bit. So oh, there's, yeah. there's evidence of man being here. You know, man versus nature. I mean, look at this. Looks like nature won today, huh? Too bad for you, man. Not today, man. Yeah, you see that street light up there? What? That's our street light. It came on when we had our electricity turned on in our house, which you see up there. See, see the pink lights in the window? That's our house, and we got our electricity turned on about a month ago, just before Christmas. So we were mighty happy, and this street light came on at that time. A little sign of progress is the only lights on for blocks in any direction. We've planted flowers just to brighten the place up a little. Yeah, I know it's completely ridiculous, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> All right, so we're in New Orleans. It's six months post Katrina, and as you can see, things are getting back to normal. Actually, things are a long way from normal here in New Orleans. Uh, it's the six month mark, and as you can see, this street light that we visited a month ago is still down on the ground. So here's a street light that still, still isn't up and running yet. We came at night last time because it's, you know, dramatic with the lighting. Oh, that's right. It's not up, but it's running. But this time we're coming during the day just because you can see more. And if you look around, you can see that there's houses that have been flattened by the hurricane. The debris is still there. There's trailers. There's all kinds of homes around here that are unoccupied because they're not habitable because they're flooded. And keep in mind, this didn't just happen yesterday. It happened six months ago. Keep in mind also that we're not in some kind of rural area here. We are in the heart of a major American city. Looks like we'll be having new neighbors, and this is where they'll live in one of these uh, FEMA trailer parks that you've heard so much about. When we saw that they were doing work here. I came and asked what they were building. They acted like they had no idea, which I thought was kind of funny, and told me to call this number to find out. Turns out it's the Shaw Group. And uh, they let me know that, yes, it's going to be a trailer site. And the next day, boom, trailers. But they're still unoccupied at this point. Not sure what the holdup is exactly. Housing is the most critical need at the top of most people's lists, right up there with levees. Uh, housing, you can't bring a city back to life without people, and people need places to live. So that's why they put a trailer site up here. I think they're going to be building another one about another block in the other side of our house. Uh, we've been seeing the demolition of the old physician's hospital there. They fix and bring it down. They also didn't seem to want me to videotape, but you know what? Screw them. This is our city, and we'll go around and take pictures and videotape whatever we like. Yeah! You heard? Just try shutting us down, yeah. man. It's eight months post Katrina. And as you can see, they've actually done something with this street light that we keep coming back and checking on. They've disconnected it from the electrical system and, and they've kind of moved it to the side. But it's still just lying there, you know, on the ground. I don't really care about this street light. I mean, I'm not complaining about the fact that they don't have it up and running. Uh, to me, it's, it's more like a symbol of normalcy. There's a lot more important things that hopefully are being concentrated on or not. Right now uh, in New Orleans, now they're still finding bodies, in case you didn't know. There are still collapsed houses. At the seven, seven month mark, I went down to the Lower Ninth Ward and took a look around down there. I was just so depressed, I, I didn't even make a video. There's still a massive lack of housing. There's still, I don't know, 100,000, 200,000 or more people displaced from New Orleans who have not been able to return home. Eight months. That's right, it's been eight months. That's right, Ocho. The trailer park here is all set up and has been set up for quite a while and it's still unoccupied. We, we filmed this at the six month mark and it was ready. So two months it's been lying fallow, if you will. I asked why 
the trailer park is still unoccupied after all this time. He said they're just waiting for clean water. The water apparently is not uh, safe to drink here, which concerned me a little bit because we live just half a block away and we've been drinking the water. Oh my God, is that why I've been having all that diarrhea? So, it's May 29th, nine months after Katrina made landfall in New Orleans. And, uh, well, you might wonder, how are we doing? And the truth is, I've really lost all perspective on, on what even is normal anymore. And to give you an idea why I, I've come here to this little strip mall, rather close to where we live, and, uh, well, you can see the state of it here nine months post Katrina. So what we got in the strip mall is we got a hardware store that uh, is still boarded up and I don't think it's ever gonna reopen. We got a clothing store that uh, the lights are on, but the merchandise is untouched uh, since it was flooded nine months ago. And a Chinese restaurant that's a little worse for the wear. In terms of some of the other little uh, markers that we've been checking up on here in our little monthly updates, the street light is still lying down there in Jeff Davis. The trailer site near our house still seems to be unoccupied. While there's, I don't know, 100,000 or more displaced New Orleanians who are unable to return home because they have no place to live. There's still parts of the Lower Ninth Ward where you can't stay overnight. And uh, they're still finding bodies. In fact, they just found a body of a, a man here uh, in my neighborhood when his house caught on fire. But he died during Katrina. So nine months later, that's where we're at. And if, as if all that wasn't enough, hurricane season starts June 1st. And are we ready? Well, the uh, levees and the flood walls still need some work. The drainage systems are not at full capacity yet, so no, we're not ready. I don't want to bring anybody down, but that's just the way it is. Here we are at the 10-month mark of uh, Little Miss Katrina, and um, we are at the Lafitte Housing Project, and Hanau, which has told me not to trespass, um, has just announced they're about to tear four of these projects down, uh, which is, I, I'm, you know, I don't know about that. It seems not like a good idea because they're still in relatively good shape. Uh, New Orleans still needs a lot of labor. People want to come back but can't because they don't have a place to live, and you, know, you got to get a job to get a, you know, the whole, the whole thing. And you can see these VPS, uh, big steel plates were added. Now, oddly enough, those were added two months after, you know, the storm. You know, hey, let's keep these people out. Not to mention the name of the company is Access Denied. Just very strange. Anyway, so, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, the man's out to get him or something. It's really not cool. But, um, so here we are. It's about to storm, uh, which you may or may not be able to hear in the background, which is good, oddly enough, because We've been uh, suffering a drought, believe it or not, since Katrina. All right, well, um, thank you. I don't know why I'm bidding adieu. So it's 11 months today since Katrina hit New Orleans, and we're about halfway done with the renovation of our house. Uh, they've replaced a lot of termite-damaged wood, almost the entire lower floor of the house, in fact. We've just had it re-plumbed. We're going to get it rewired. So I think that, all things considered, we're going to be okay, you know, personally. But we're worried about the city uh, and our neighborhood. And so we've been trying to be more involved with the neighborhood uh, recovery planning and, and so forth, especially these last couple months. And it's kind of been running me ragged. Very few of our neighbors actually have been able to return. Most of the uh, properties around here are rental properties. And a lot of these landlords own a lot, too many places, they're stretched too thin and they can't get them fixed up. And so people aren't able to return. So right here across the street is uh, where my neighbors used to live. 
And uh, my neighbors were uh, five little chil children in this house, and they came over almost every day for uh, Band-Aids and homework help and uh, bananas and so forth. So one of the things we did was we made a garden, and um, it unfortunately, post-Katrina, it didn't uh, make it. But look here, this actually survived at the, the 4 o'clock. Anyway, so I made a new garden, and um, it's doing nicely. I've got uh, cosmos, pentas, um, I don't know what those are exactly. Anyway, I did some uh, milkweed for my garden, some transplants, so the girls can uh, watch the uh, caterpillars. Now, I hope the girls are coming back. That's the, that's the plan, but uh, this, is, this is happening quite slow. I heard someone uh, cough the other day while I was gardening, so what's going on in there but anyway all right i don't want to get my throat slit so it's been one year since katrina then one year since our the levees failed one year since our neighborhood flooded 12 months and uh we're still facing a lot of challenges you could say for example there's a, a grocery store there behind me hasn't been cleaned out since the storm and uh, it's been overrun by rodents and it's really nasty, actually. So we're trying to get somebody from the city to do something about it, uh, or the property owner for that matter. I've contacted him, wrote him a letter. I've called my city council person, and uh, hopefully somebody will do something soon. Because there are people living in the house right next door, children. And I've seen rats running out from the grocery store into their house or underneath their house. It's a, an immediate hazard to the health and safety of this neighborhood. So we're here at Eisenhower Elementary School in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's like 15 months post Katrina and we are trying to get our lives back on track, especially trying to rebuild the school system, which everybody has said is key to the recovery of the city. My wife, I'm proud to say, is a teacher in the Orleans Parish Public School System. Okay, here at Eisenhower School, we're learning Greek and Latin roots. So I've heard. And one way we're learning, but we're learning, we're learning Greek and Latin roots is by playing bingo. So here are all their words, like sphere, hydro, atmology, photo. So what we've done is we've created a bingo card in which we have all of the <coughs> root words, and then I give them the definition. For example, for seeing. So then they're going to put what that means. Bingo. Oh, bingo. Call them back, dude. What do you got? Electro, zoom, hydro, and scope. All right. Yeah, I did. I called for seeing. Yeah. Oh, y'all got to finish your test. All right. Okay, I have. This is first. Don't look at the camera. You guys don't know anything about this. Zoo oh, is animal. Oh, oh, this is my. Hi, I'm Kamari. Hi, I'm Kisia. Dermatologist. What's your name? Destiny. And I'm the cool one. Oh. Sphere. Sphere is globe. Y'all know we're taking a lot of time here. <laughs> All right, electric. Logic. Oh, you'll never figure that one out. Electric. Wait, no. Mythos. No, wait, no. I know. I know. This. One is um um one who runs one. Mono. You write a paragraph. What does Telly mean? Do you you mean, call uh, somebody far away. This maybe you should have yes. done something called studying. <laughs> maybe I maybe I didn't know something we called did. studying. Okay. Photo okay. photosynthesis. <laughs> okay, this thing's finished. Let's roll. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she's going to be the drummer. So where do you want to do it? Over here? Over there? Yeah, yeah. Right Just preparing for the special thing that we have to do here for you guys. We're in the class. Problem solving. We've got patience like you've never seen before. The students stare. We smile back. Me and all my girls got pride like that. Yeah. We're problem solving. We're problem, problem solving. We're problem solving. Problem, problem solving. We got courage in the classroom. Our confidence flows and blooms. We're showing effort to do our best. Our integrity is better than all the rest. Cause we're problem solving, problem problem solving, problem solving, problem problem solving, problem solving, problem problem solving. Rosa Parks was at the back of the bus. She had courage, she stood up for us. 
Martin Luther King, this is for you. Yeah, patience while your dreams, dreams come true. true. Problem solving, problem, problem solving, problem solving, problem, problem solving, problem solving, problem, problem solving, peace. peace. Yeah. I just want meatloaf. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. They gotta turn in their tests because we're here at school and we're learning things. That's right, Mr. Bard. He has it correct. We're Wait, hold on. I think I failed. Bye. Bye, see you later. People ask me all the time, they say, uh, you know, how's it going down there in New Orleans? And to tell you the truth, I just don't know how to answer. People are still living in trailers. I'd estimate in our neighborhood only about 20, 25 percent of the, the houses are actually reoccupied. People are still getting screwed on their insurance. The recovery money, that just seems to evaporate mysteriously. Government leadership, political leadership, forget about it, there isn't any. People continue to come down here from all over the country to do volunteer work, for which we're very grateful. Thank you. The street light is still down on Jeff Davis. People are still trying to get back into their homes. Some people, hell, a couple hundred thousand people still haven't even been able to return permanently to the city of New Orleans. 200,000 people still displaced. And the renovation uh, of our own house is still continuing. Actually, we just got sheetrock put up down here in the lower level. I'm sure they're gonna have to tear some of it back down again because uh, the, some of the electrical and plumbing wasn't quite in place as it turns out, which is great, huh? Uh, but anyway, we're continuing, you know, we live upstairs and so it's nice that we have this downstairs part. And uh, Warren Easton High School is back in session, so that's a good thing. Every day, we see good things and bad things. And it's hard to say where it's all headed. If it's headed in the right direction or the wrong direction overall. I just don't know. It's confusing. It's enough to uh, drive a man to drink. And in fact, I think it's time that we have a drink because this is gonna be my final monthly update. So I could use a drink. Barkeep. We're gonna mix a drink. We're gonna mix the Sazerac, or the Sazerac cocktail. This is supposedly the oldest cocktail uh, in American history. You can kind of tell by the fact that, you know, it's got some of this in it. This is Old Overholt. Uh, it's a straight rye whiskey, and you can see that this guy, I mean, he's he goes way back. So you wanna add, uh, we've got a cocktail shaker here that's got um, some ice in it. You wanna add about an ounce and a half of this in there. Looks about right. Um, then the next thing that you want to add, this is Peychaud's Bitter, or Peychaud's, or Peachaud's, or something like that. It's a it's an aromatic cocktail bitters that was uh, invented in New Orleans. Um, you know, they used to make these uh, back in the 1800s as kind of like a stomach medication. It's basically just bitter flavored alcohol. Um, and so we're just going to add a little bit, like supposedly three dashes, which I, that might have been more than that, I couldn't tell. I'm already too drunk. Then, uh, so you want to stir this around, um, maybe put the lid on it. Oh, but before you do that, you're supposed to add some sugar. You can tell that I'm uh, not actually from New Orleans, um, but uh, you know, I'm doing this in honor of our um, Southern brethren uh, who have suffered so much. Sugar, that's about uh, a teaspoon there. Um, and then we want to shake it around. Uh, a good bit. And then you're going to want a, a chilled glass. Now, the way that I did this was uh, I actually put it in the freezer for about a half an hour and I also put some ice in it so that it get extra cold. I'm going to get rid of the ice because uh, it's it's a mortal sin to, um, to actually serve this drink over ice. It's just supposed to be chilled. Now, this drink originally was made with absinthe. It was a licorice flavored um, alcohol that was popular in the late 1800s. Unfortunately, it was outlawed because it had wormwood in it, which kind of makes you go crazy. So instead, we're stuck with this stuff. This is Pernod, which is just basically licorice-flavored alcohol that tastes like shit, but anyway. It doesn't really matter how much you put in here because what you're gonna do is you just you just take it uh, in the glass and then you swish it around to get it on the, on the sides of the glass. You see uh, my technique that's similar 
but different from the rock's finger technique in which you would stir it with your finger. So then you just want to dump this out. You actually don't drink this, believe it or not. Um, which is actually kind of good if you ask me because I hate licorice. And then, finally, you pour the stuff that was in your shaker into the glass. Now you can see that it's uh, kind of orange colored. And then, <laughs> and then you want to add uh, a, a, twisted, a twist of lemon peel. Now, you kind of just want to twist this above the glass, release kind of some of the essence of the lemon peel. This is kind of an older one, so it's not going to actually drip in it. So I'm just going to kind of dunk it in there. But you're not supposed to leave it in there. That's, that's uncool, dude. Because you don't want chunks. You just want something that you can sip. Wow, that's potent. It's kind of, uh, uh, tastes basically like bitter, sugary alcohol. Um, which, you know, I suppose is what it's all about. So, you know, cheers to New Orleans. It may be uh, a simple drink, um, but it's complex at the same time, and that's how we like it. Smooth. So this is a piece of viewer mail, and it was sent um, in April. This person has actually sent currency from La Banque de l'Afrique Occidentale. Wow. It's Saint Cash Fr money. This is my kind of viewer. It's Saint Franc. You know, I prefer, prefer American dollars, but hey, any kind of money will do, especially such attractive money. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Right, the address at the bottom of the screen has absolutely nothing to do with the request for money that you may have heard recently. You can ignore it. The um, note that came along with the Saint Franc goes as such. And I apologize for any mispronunciations. This came from an anonymous viewer. There's no return address or name, so... There's no one to tell me how to pronounce this. Saba Sibi Saba Umgoa Bawana Gona Zona. Eco Eco and the Lion Drinks Bud Light. Rocks Rocks. Me make em contribution. So, um, the thank you for the Saint Franc. And the penetratingly meaningful letter. Right. Yeah. Saba Sibi Saba to you as well. Oh, remember when Thank you.